Welcome to Learn Medical Spanish. So today I'm going to talk about el empacho. What is el empacho? Well, this is a medical Spanish cultural topic, meaning kind of like traditional beliefs about certain things um, that some of your patients might have. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what it is, what are some of the symptoms, what are some of the traditional treatments and other possible treatments, and then kind of tie it all together to kind of help give you a little better understanding of uh, maybe what your patients might think about this. So first, what is empacho? What is el empacho? <laughs> so basically it means an intestinal obstruction. Um, anything causing an intestinal obstruction, like food, a certain type of food or too much food or the wrong type of food, or maybe something else besides food in some instances. So obviously, or as you can probably gather, um, there are real intestinal obstructions, and then there may be some situations where there's more of kind of just a traditional belief, like, oh, maybe this is el empacho, maybe there's a blockage, when maybe the symptoms could be from something else, right? So it kind of overlap. there's an overlap between kind of the real, what we know scientifically about the medical situation and kind of the traditional beliefs. They overlap, so sometimes it's kind of legitimate, um, and then other times it might be a little out there, right? So next, what causes... El empacho. What causes it specifically? So eating certain foods, um, so that could be things that are high in fiber because then your body has to work harder to digest it or whatnot. Um, there's, I found a list of foods here. Some examples include beans, broccoli, cabbage, corn, lentils, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower. So like things with a lot of fiber, I guess. Um, eating too much food, overeating all too much all at once um, is one thing that's believed to cause this in some instances. Um, eating food that's not adequately cooked, so st something that's undercooked. Um, and then and then getting into kind of the real medical field or whatever, there's also um, an association with the actual GI problems like Crohn's disease, irritable bowel syndrome, and things like that that could also cause el empacho, cause empacho. So what are the symptoms of el empacho? Well, basically everything you'd expect if there's either a real or kind of imagined obstruction in the abdomen, uh, in the GI tract. And so that could be things like pain, bloating, nausea, vomiting, um, constipation maybe, you know, if you're not having bowel movements or not passing gas or something, cramping, indigestion, all those types of fun things, all those fun things. So the interesting thing about El, El Empacho is, like I said, it's kind of, on the one hand, it does fit in with our actual medical understanding of things. And on the other hand, it maybe goes beyond that at times. So the treatment also um, is both real and maybe sometimes not as legitimate, right? So some of the traditional treatments include things like drinking herbal teas, um, rolling an egg on the stomach. That's interesting because I mentioned an egg as a potential treatment for evil eye in another video. Um, doing a rough massage of the abdomen, so kind of working it all out, right? <laughs> Getting that obstruction out of there. And then there's a traditional treatment that's dangerous, and that is there's a couple of lead containing chemicals um, that uh, I guess traditionally were used to treat El Empacho, and they are Azarcone and Greta. I don't know if I'm pronouncing those right, because I don't know that much about them, but they're lead, different lead compounds or whatnot, that chemicals with lead that have been used to treat El Empacho. Um, so I found a video online, I thought it was kind of interesting, where this lady is talking in Spanish about El Empacho, and she kind of mixes up, makes up this uh, recipe for like a treatment for El Empacho, and ultimately it's basically olive oil and garlic, um, but one of the interesting things she said during the video as she was explaining this in Spanish, and I think she is Mexican, uh, she advises not to go to the doctor because she says doctors don't believe el empacho is an actual illness. And I would say that's half true, right? Because like I said, you know, there are obstructions and other related things, but there's also just random GI symptoms that may not be caused by an obstruction, right? So that's where it's kind of uh, um, you get the overlap on your Venn diagram or whatever. So what are some potentially more modern uh, treatment ideas as opposed to just the traditional ideas? Well, there's a maybe following the low fiber diet, um, depending on what kind of symptoms you're having and so forth. Because, of course, some people get like bloating with certain fibrous foods and whatnot. Um, burping or lying on your side if it's like a gas pressure, over-the-counter medications, antibiotics if it's like a food poisoning thing. And then if you had an actual obstruction, right, you'd probably want to do some imaging, maybe an endoscopy of some sort, maybe a nasogastric tube, uh, maybe getting a surgeon involved, you know, so there's a bunch of <laughs> things that go into that, right? Um, yeah. So in summary, el empacho basically just means a belief that there's some kind of a, um, obstruction in the GI tract, and it could be legitimate or not. But um, I actually remember having an experience with this when I was in the ER, and some some patient had you know like stomach symptoms or whatever, and a family member said something about el empacho. So like, okay, they were kind of attributing it to that. So that's kind of an interesting little connection. So I didn't know too much about it at the time, I don't think, but just kind of thinking back. I could have maybe had a little bit better understanding of what their perspective on it was, you know, knowing what I know now. 
Um, so I've got another video here that talks about um, evil eye, which is another medical Spanish cultural belief. And then if you want to get into some medical Spanish dialogues and things like that, you can check out my podcast or here's a playlist on YouTube where you can also find some of that uh, information about how to talk to your Spanish speaking patients. Thanks for watching. Till next time.